West is the best coast, but the East Coast is the Beast Coast. That's what I say, Stephen A. And that's what the Knicks proved last night. Stephen A., your Knicks taking down Shannon's Lakers 114-109. How about Julius Randle, 27-14. Jalen Brunson adding 29. Okay, uh, Shay Shay, have the Lakers struggles justified skepticism about that in-season tournament? No, I don't think so. I think they're just struggling because they're not playing well. I mean, they got crushed on the offensive glass. Hartenstein had 17 rebounds. Julius Randle had a monster day. Jalen Brunson's going to do what he did. You see, quickly comes in, and he does have an outstanding game. LeBron James was had a triple-double, 25 points, but he was extremely inefficient in getting that. Anthony Davis was his monster self, and you had Austin Reeves played extremely well. But when I look at Torian Prince, 3 of 13, I look at Cam Reddish, 2 of 9. I look at D'Lo, 3 of 10. You're talking mm -hmm. about 8 of 32. I don't know if you're going to get very many wins when your uh, core players, the guys that you're counting on, score like that. I don't believe this this uh, skid they've been on, mm -hmm. I don't believe it has anything to do with the end-season tournament. Like mm -hmm. Stephen A. told me, it's early. It's early. And the season is fluid. It's fluid. fluid. So with that being, so, said, that being so, said, I'm not worried. I understand they embark on a road trip over the next three games, and yeah. then they come home, I, I think, the day before Christmas, on Christmas Day against the Celtics. I'm not worried about it. They'll fix this. But the in-season tournament, I thought it went great. The Lakers won. We hung the banner and go uh -huh. hang another banner at the uh -huh. end of the year. Now right. run tell that. All right, run till that. All right, Martin Lawrence. All right, all right. You can try that if you want to. Uh, let me pull. Let me pull my Shannon invitation right there. Oh, come, come on now. I mean, listen. I mean, for those of you who don't know, I mean, not only is Shannon Sharp great. He also has a great team. You understand what I'm saying? I know Ashley and Jordan and the crew. I know you got your stats. I know you got your stats. So it's real convenient for me how you left out the stat that since winning the cup, the Lakers have been outscored by 15 points per game. With LeBron James on the floor. I know you know that stat. You left it yeah. out, didn't you? You yeah. left it out, didn't you? You, you, you mentioned all of those stats, night. Shannon. You mentioned all of those stats, Shannon. You didn't mention why? that last. Why? You didn't mention why that. Why? <laughs> why? 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 Leave that why, out am I, for? why am I going to present evidence that's going to get my client convicted? <laughs> why would I ever do that? That's your job. <laughs> that's your client. That's your client now. Let me tell y'all something right now. Let me get, let me, let, in all seriousness, Shannon, let me tell you what the, what the issue is. And it's from me hanging out with my man, Mike Wilbon. The, the, the godfather, you know, Mike Wilbon was skeptical about the in-season tournament because one of the things he was lamenting is that what the hell do you need that extra $500,000 in cash to prioritize what the hell you're going to do and what you're supposed to be doing? We'll see what these guys look like, all of them, he was saying, once the in-season tournament ends. Now we're looking at the Lakers. In-season tournament ends. You've lost three of the last four games. Nine and 12 in non-tournament games this season. It was nice to see AD, because by the way, Anthony Davis has been balling. Let's give love he, with him. Outstanding. He's been, he's been outstanding. He's been, but we all know he could be outstanding when he's on the court. Correct. We know he can do what he wants to do. It's just yeah. a matter of him wanting to do it on a consistent basis. But we know how great Anthony Davis is. And LeBron right. James with the triple-double, we can't... And, and listen, he's, he's giving what he's got. He ain't cheating you. rest of the team shoots 33% last night while he, him and Anthony Davis shoot 53%. I get all of that. But when you 9 and 12 in non-tournament games and you were undefeated in in-tournament games and the difference is $500,000 extra in cash for every player and the coaches, okay, that does rub people the wrong way from the standpoint, wait a minute, treat all the damn games like this. Come on now. And, and I'm not saying in a literal sense. I'm certainly not accusing the Lakers of damn losing on purpose or not caring. But what I'm trying to say in the level of focus and the priority placed on those in-season tournament games, why are we not seeing that in non-in-season tournament games, Shannon? That is a legitimate question. I, that is, is a legitimate is, question. And if you, remember, you remember I told you, I said, Stephen A., I believe they're placing a little bit more emphasis on the in-tournament games because mm -hmm. they want to win this. That's right. Because it's like, hey, the NBA thought, well, thought enough of it to put it in. Hey, right. if we in it, let's win it. I don't believe if you look at the way they played. Now they did beat San Antonio. I think the one of the wins that they got was San Antonio. Right. Once and they, they got lost back. one to San Antonio too. And, and, they and they it, won yeah, the game Anthony Davis played and lost played, the game LeBron lost, played. LeBron came back. Right. But if you look at it, I don't think they played well enough to win. And that's the thing that concerns what I, what I dislike about the Lakers the most. They like to fall behind and then like put one of these frantic comebacks and say you well you know we got to we just play a little bit. No no. 
How about stuff from the jump, come out in there and play with the intensity that is needed in order to get a win? But I'm not overly concerned, Stephen A. Uh -huh. I think the thing is, is that, look, we'll learn a lot more about this uh, basketball team mm -hmm. as they go on the road because it doesn't get any easier. Well, let me we say this real quick. The Bulls just beat the, beat the Sixers last night. Right. Well, let me, let me just say this real quick before Molly chimes in, Shannon Shaw. You know, L.A. is the biggest threat. It's arguably the biggest threat to the yeah. reigning defending champion, Denver Nuggets. I'm just not sure it's the Lakers team in L.A. That's the biggest Oh, now all, sudden, now all of a sudden you don't just know the Clippers. I'm just not saying. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. I don't know, Shannon. I don't know. I don't know. I did, I did see T. Lou the other day at a restaurant and had a great conversation with him. Right. And he said, you know what, hey, we're, we're starting to figure it out. We're going we're gonna to be even better. That's right. But, I mean, when you play, when you play uh, Indiana – who doesn't look good against Indiana with they no defense playing tail? That's true. That's true. That's true. And by the way, that <laughs> by the way. I, I know what restaurant you saw him at, but I'm not going to mention that because we, we keep that low key. We keep okay, that I appreciate key. that. I but appreciate I know, that. But I know, the spot. I, go there all, I know the spot. I go there all the time. I, I go there all the time. Stephen A., <laughs> speaking of your theory with the in season right, tournament, right. obviously they played the Pacers. Right. The Pacers, four straight losses, one and four since the in season tournament. There we tournament. go. So I don't there know if go. everybody got hyped up about it and then what the deal is, but yeah. that's what it is. Memphis Grizzlies star guard John Morant returns to the lineup tonight after serving a 25-game suspension for displaying a weapon on social media on two separate occasions. In the 25-game stretch without Morant, the Grizzlies have fallen to 6-19 on the season, tied for second worst in the West. All right, uh, Stephen, I'll start with you. What does Jaw's return mean? It means that NBA players and professional athletes overall better start paying attention what's transpiring because the world, Shannon, is reminding them about what's going on. John ja Morant, we can look at the Memphis Grizzlies 6 and 19 at this point, dead last in points per game and field goal percentage shooting. He'll make up for that. He's a superstar in this game. He's going to step on the court. He's going to wreak havoc. I have no doubt about that. He's a 25 point per game scorer plus, and I have no doubt that he's going to he's going to continue to do that and he's going to add a spark and he's going to come on the court, Shannon hell-bent mm -hmm. on, on, on wreaking absolute havoc, and he's more than capable of doing it. We miss him. We need to see him on the basketball court. Nobody here is rooting for him. But, Shannon, I wanted to use this opportunity to touch on a bigger issue. We see what Draymond Green has now gone through and how he's going to be in counseling and stuff like that, and we wish him nothing but the best. But Draymond Green was once being talked about as potentially the heir apparent to Charles Barkley. Now you got people speculating on whether or not any opportunities will be available to him beyond basketball because of his on-court transgressions. Well, John ja Morant had off-court transgressions. Now, I want to come to John ja Morant's defense by saying this. He broke no laws. None. There's, there, he, broke, he broke no laws whatsoever. Now, the NBA is a different animal. That's who you work for, and they've got their own laws and their bodies right. that you have to capitulate to, and that's what he has to do if he's an NBA player. But what he has to understand and what he needs to be reminded about, and I'm sure he knows better than anybody, let me throw this by you, Shannon Sharp. He's had deals with Hulu, Beats by Dre, Panini America, Power Aid, obviously a Nike deal that was paying him about $12 million, which included a sneaker line, the Jaw Ones. All of that was placed in jeopardy. Remember, you had a couple of those brands disassociate themselves with him immediately from the first suspension because he was flashing a gun in the strip club. And then when the second suspension came down, we saw what transpired thereafter. It's important at this particular moment in time to mention to all the professional athletes out there, please remember what you did this for. Yeah, you love the game. Yes, you're inc incredible at it. You do what not even a a, a, a minute percentage of the population can ever do. You worked your tail off to build better lives for yourself. You going to throw it all away? Don't do it. Let's keep in mind what got you in this position to begin with and to make sure whether it's the company you keep, it's the people you associate with, it's having the real folks in and keep them in check because they represent you. You don't just represent yourself. They represent you as well. Shannon, you got people representing you, right? They Absolutely. walk out there, they act up. That's your name. You ain't going to tolerate that. You know I got people working for me. They Absolutely. represent my name the wrong way. They're going to be gone. I don't play that mess. That, that's the real world. That's what professional sports leagues are saying to you because in this climate that we're living in, with people losing their jobs, with people struggling and what have you, nobody's going to have sympathy for multi-millionaire athletes who don't know how to act. 
who right. make these kind of mistakes. And when we say don't know how to act, we're not talking about what you literally did right or wrong. What we're saying is whoever you work for, they have a perception of how they want their brands represented. And if you don't represent them accordingly, you're going to pay the piper. So with John Morant coming back, with Draymond Green going through what he's going through, with a plethora of others finding themselves in precarious situations, I just wanted to take a moment to remind people, you here, you here for that bag. You want to play, you want to be exceptional, but you also want that bag, okay? Yeah. Don't let anybody get in the way of it. That's all right. I want to say, Shannon. Yes, Stephen, I, 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 you, you said something at the end, and I know what you meant to say, but I want to go ahead and, and correct it now. You sure. said nobody is rooting against Ja. And no one is rooting against Ja because we want the best for Ja. We right. understand because a lot of us came from very similar backgrounds, worked our way to the top, and we want to make sure we do everything we possibly can to, to remain a top. When I look at Ja, what he's going to bring back, you talk about a guy that averaged 26 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists last year. So he instantaneously gives you offense. He's a spark. You, when you play in that crowd in front of uh, the grindhouse, when they play in that building and he's doing his acrobatics, I've never seen a man elevate like he can elevate, hang in the air, contort his body. After watching him play several times, He's box office. The term you use, Stephen A., he is box office. He is the real deal. He has some issues. You got to understand, though, Josh, the NBA is a private business, and they, de they determined that ha flashy guns on social media is unacceptable. Now, fans at home, you can talk about the Second Amendment all you want to. You can talk about he ain't broke no law all you want to. He broke the law where the NBA determined that he broke. But I believe, hopefully, from this situation, I didn't feel the first time he learned his lesson because, he, you know, he went away, he went to a little drive through a, a clinic, and that wasn't good. But I believe now, having to sit down for 25 games, have something taken away from you that you love, that you worked your entire life to get into, I do believe it. But Stephen A., I'm a firm believer. The number one apology is change behavior. You can give me all you want to say I'm sorry. You can do all this and write all the scripts and the prescripts and say all this and right. all the counseling that you need to go to. But until you change your behavior, that apology means nothing. And I believe, hopefully, Ja has learned his lesson. He comes back and be the Ja that we remember since he's entered into the league and he has a lustrous career. And we look back and say, this was a blip on the screen. And that's what people weren't getting when I went on talked about his press conference on Friday on my podcast. I was trying to make the point. The press conference looked eerily similar to what we always see from him when he's talking. And I'm saying it's important that he looks a little bit different. It's important. Like, you know, you got vulnerabilities. You've had issues. Everything yes. in everybody's business. But you got to say something. And you got to come across a bit different than what you did before. Contrite. Because folks are looking at you. Contrite. That's one word to use. Definitely so. And also, you got to illuminate things just a little bit more. To sit up there and come with these vague responses and these terse and short responses, people ain't buying.